Photography Daily. Welcome along to Thursday's edition. Today, Amelia Trowbridge, respected British news portrait and conflict photographer, talks about picking your battles. I have seen so many people post images of mine that they are they are out of copyright on. Yeah. You know, and I I just accept with love because if I don't accept with love, it will destroy me. Damien Kingwell, thank you for your photo tips today. While many of us still aren't going out into the big wide world to shoot, time to whip out the lens that's probably least used in many bags, the macro. Look out to find interesting textures, he says, of the everyday, such as ice in the freezer, mohair in your wardrobe. Look for reflections in polished spoons or glassware and go find the monsters that look huge in your macro lens and lurk within your garden. Find out what's in those cobwebs. I just did that the other day, funnily enough, for a project that I was working on. You'd be amazed what you do find in those cobwebs. Thank you for your tip, Damien. Appreciate your mail. And you can contact the show through this address. Send your emails to studio at photographydaily.show. Last night, I got stuck down the YouTube rabbit hole from which I just could not escape. One of those times where on the right-hand side of the app, the list of suggested titles looked so good, I couldn't seem to break away and was without doubt at the algorithm's mercy. And it was all really in response from a message I got from an acquaintance, a friend, if you like, worrying about feeling that they'd got as far as they could in photography and that they didn't perhaps have the raw skills others seemed to have in abundance. So ever the person to try and come up with something that might more meaningful or interesting than simply just, you're great, keep doing what you're doing. I really wanted to have something with a bit more substance. We touched on the stress and anxiety of living up to what we feel others have in terms of a skill we may not yesterday. Imposter syndrome was one of the items we just glanced at to come back to at another time in far more detail. It seems that many creatives worry about this and also they're not happy until they've found perfection when the reality is many of the greats suggested in a, in a photographic career spanning decades that only in reality made a handful of images they were truly, truly happy with. There's no golden, easy route in life. You certainly get out what you put in, I know. But most importantly, we're all on a level playing field. It's just that some people see that playing field with no edge liner chalked into their pitches. So what makes some people more successful than others? Well, the first, I think, is it's a simple thing. Belief and sheer driven belief. I'm not talking arrogance, and there's a fine line here. I'm talking the belief that makes more noise on your left shoulder than the annoying yeah but character on your right one. So I liked this quote from David Goggins. It's where we'll start, a former Navy SEAL. David says, I'm not gifted, I'm just driven. This from a former Navy SEAL with a history of obesity, asthma and congenital heart disease, which limited him to perform at only 75% physical capacity. Now, anybody who's read about the Navy SEALs will understand that 100% would probably not be enough to complete the training, but his words ring true in my own incomplete life story. I wanted to be a broadcaster, and I'd spent hours and hours making demo tapes, which my poor, suffering late father would listen to and favourably comment upon. What I learned from that early period in my life was that being gifted wasn't half as important as being tenacious. Not necessarily aimlessly so, but a bit like learning the piano, I guess. Start out with a C major scale with your right index finger. It's where all concerto pianists started after all. And then drive, and then believe. And it was drive, not immediate gift, drive, that brought me results. The second is from Jay Shetty, the self-styled and titled London Urban Monk. The secret to having everything you want in your life is knowing you already do. His words there so resonated with me, and they're words I should have tattooed on my arm. I don't have tattoos. I'm a bit of a wimp when it comes to that kind of stuff. But if I did, these words would be the ones I think I'd choose. Jay said, we don't appreciate often in our lives as they are. We kind of experience them in a somewhat more negative aspect often, a kind of human trait. Complaining, he says, stops us being in control of change. It's contagious. And when we choose to follow that path, we act as a magnet for others to do the same. How true, I thought. We're back to the left and right shoulder conversations. And then as the bonus experience, or quote, if you will, this is an old chestnut, but it's true. There is only one you. Be it. I met a guy at a wedding, granted this is about 9pm, so he felt a little bit more emboldened thanks to a vat or three of red wine. And he said to me, has anyone ever told you you're the spitting image of Sid Haig? 
I must have looked confused, so he added, The horror movie actor. You know the one? No, I thought I don't. So I looked Sid Haig up on Wiki. Born 1939. Still at the time of this film, alive and well, I think, and living in Fresno. That puts him best part of 30 years older than me, maybe a mite more, nearly the age of my late dad. His film credentials are impressive for sure. And when this guy first said I look like a Hollywood cult movie star, I thought, yo, that is actually dope, as my 12-year-old probably wouldn't say. But I don't want to be Sid Haig. Sorry, Sid. It's stressful trying to be somebody else. Being yourself is a well-worn cliche in media land, but it's equally one of the best attributes you can gift yourself. Break away from those that influence. Go inside yourself. Work out who you are. You probably already know. Are you empathic as a person? How do you tell stories? Be that person, not the one you follow on social media, TV or radio. Appreciate who you are and play to that person. Celebrate the mistakes. Don't aim to please others. At this time especially, accept change. It's uncomfortable, sure, and I'm feeling that myself at the moment in my career, but actually I've started to think along the lines that I'm a start-up again, just starting up with a whole bunch more knowledge, as I said the other day, than I, than I did when I first took the plunge. I didn't say this to my friend, but I, I wanted to add, if all that fails, be Sid Haig, because he is, after all, one mean-looking, villainously perfect evil dude, and most actors know it's far more fun playing the bad guy than the good one. At the start of the week, I talked with the British photojournalist and portrait photographer Amelia Trowbridge, whose multi-layered approach to genre and style has seen her shoot everything from war through to celebrity portraits, work with Time magazine and shoots for Jimmy Choo and Tatler and GQ. And we're going to finish off the interview segment of the show this week ahead of the Friday Photo Walk tomorrow with the second part of our chat. Today, Amelia talks of a never-ending battle with copyright, how photography has changed professionally. But we start with how the outlet for strong photojournalism has shifted, and we begin in Kosovo, where even in the last few years of the 90s, the investment in, either by column inches or in pure financial support, was starting to dry. I know, and the work I shot there was actually just, for me, really important. And you know what, I think the Sunday Times ended up printing one picture. And then, you know, uh, you know, going to Kosovo, there was uh, what, what I experienced most was all these journalists, all the world's best writers and photographers were all there. Yeah. And uh, and they would all hang out every day in the bar America. And there was Mary Colvin, and they were all there. And um, and they didn't have very much to do because as we, I can't don't know if you all remember, but the war was all kind of was was happening hidden away. It was all kind of quite guerrilla warfare, wasn't it? It was the yeah. KLA and yeah. and the Serbs and the Serbs the Serbs had thrown everyone out of Kosovo, and and so so no one was really seeing any action. So everyone was just kind of stuck in Kukas, and it rained every day, and there was a giant refugee camp, and everyone was just nattering and talking and then there were the KLA commanders and they were all on the hustle you know they felt they were feeling very buoyant because the West had supported them remember you know Blair was like we're gonna help you you know and it all just felt like a hustlers kind of situation and there was a there was a journalist from the mirror and he was writing a story about stolen jewelry or something anyway and I ended up being a fixer between the mirror <laughs> and the KLA and that's how I made my 1500 quid in the end because in the end I only got 300 from the evening standard and I probably got 500 from, from, from being, you know, yeah, oh yeah. your documentary projects marines for a square on tour with motorhead i love i i, I smile with that one but, uh, I know, that's you know what uh there's another thread to my work and there's the humor yeah and if all else fails in life, you've got to laugh. <laughs> well, there's bear, bear, keep the humor. Yeah, bare uh, fist fighters, Soho lives. I mean, there, there's humor in those those projects. Yeah, variety, Amelia, is a spice. But maybe this is an unfair question. Which of those spices do you enjoy most from that rack? No, I'm all about the balance. I can't answer that question. <laughs> I didn't life, think you could. Life works when you have the balance. <laughs> So I've asked this question of photographers before when I see portraits in their commission galleries, such as uh, prime ministers and supermodels. How, yes. how you view the work of publicists? Because that's changed immeasurably. <laughs> I mean, to make one picture or, or a story the yeah, way and you want to. they know a lot of publicists yeah. and they have a job to do. Yes. And like that. And, you know, I've always said we're not bigger than the system. And I think that's really true. To, to photograph famous people, great actors, great talent, I'll call it not famous people, but talent, and, uh, you know, the talent that you see in the film industry without a publicist controlling it, but that's their job, is is a rare and beautiful thing. And that's some of the best work. You know, you think of the Marilyn Monroe. Yes. 
yeah. stuff in the 60s you know there wasn't a publicist around you know and it's it, it's been very it's been it's frustrating isn't it uh for photographers but this is the way it is and this is how you know uh movie stars or directors are, are expected to be seen in a certain way in a certain light now and the publicist the role of the publicist has had a lot to do with that don't you think i think uh, so yeah it's about control isn't it it's about power and it's about control right but you know everybody's that you've got loads of cooks haven't you you've got so many cooks now involved in producing imagery and you know when i start i got like the last train in the industry didn't i i got i got that little golden last yeah. years where it yeah. was like oh amelia go and spend time with this famous person and just do what you do and no one came along with me um and then it changed and then you had a choice it was like okay i i i decided to become photographers so i can shoot for magazines and meet incredible people and photograph them etc et so now what am i going to do am i going to evolve or am i going to make a stand you know and that's the choice that you have to make and it's a boundaries you know you're working out boundaries so i'm not going to use like a blame thing and you know i just hope that there's more balance in our system really the, those four words you just used the way it is i mean never 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 is that more true than than the introduction of social media i mean i, want, I wonder <laughs> i wonder how dorothy <laughs> lang would, would have would have media. would have appreciated <laughs> social media what, what do you think about social media now well, how, how much has know, it changed what you do i had a blackberry yeah till like 2014 right. and uh i had two teenage stepdaughters at the time who were like couldn't think of it. They just thought it was the best thing ever. And I was like, this is a nightmare. And I, I just thought, how on earth am I going to, you know, I've got, I, I think I must have ADD because, you know, what I love about the camera is it focuses me. And, um, you know, as a photographer, it gave me a massive way to focus all this energy. And when I put social media into the equation, I felt that, that it was just going to break my flow really badly. Mm. And I'm right, in a way. I mean, the thought that I have to post an image and tell everyone how amazing I am is really is a really bizarre thing for me. Um, and I, I, I sort of realize I, I'm also aware that by posting one image, you're pre everyone's now with social media. It's all everyone's got to put you in a box. And it's a real shame, you know, um, and there's a, there's a, there's an equation and then that's it. And you play that game and that's that, you know? So, I mean, I felt that there was a wild west moment with social media and I think things are calming down a bit. You know, I need to go to social media school and learn how, how I can harness the power of social media to, to do what I love, to inspire and to also earn a living because that's the other thing it's like you know it has taken away copyright but i again i've had to accept it i have seen so many people post images of mine that they are they are out of copyright on yeah you know and i i just accept with love because if i don't accept with love it will destroy me well that's interesting because some photographers will will chase i've had experiences in, in the court system in great britain and it doesn't work unless you've got lots and lots and lots of money and i don't have lots and lots of money i'm just a i'm just a photographer that just wanted to take amazing pictures yeah okay and i know i am a i know my energy is power powerful and i know i'm fearless but i'm not financially powerful and i am living in a country that is all about financial power right now so i don't have i don't have the time or the energy to fight these people so we all have to take responsibility for our own stuff and i'm not going to use my energy to go out and fight bad people or people that want to take my my property for free i'm going to use it to continue just dreaming and continue shooting pictures that i'm proud of and that i feel bring up the high, the vibration of our society in a time when i think we all really need it and to to raise my son as a single mother in the best way i possibly can i, look, look, I want to end with a, a light ish question it's right. a couple of years but uh, ago but tucked into your news in well the news part of your archive was a portrait of one of my one of my favorite radio presenters kirsty young Oh. celebrating 75 years of the airing of that magnificent show which i love to bits yeah. you, you've not yet appeared on this show this is not where you tell me you have um yeah. but but i think you'd make a super castaway on that program and, and i'm intrigued uh, I, i'm going to ask the question in case kirsty never gets the chance to ask you so i'm i'm going to ask the questions that they have at the, at the end which i almost it's one of my favorite parts of the show actually they're allowed for anybody that hasn't heard the program and i can't believe you haven't um you're allowed to take one piece of music and I'd love to know what that would be. 
I don't like choosing just one song. Well, you'd have to. That's the problem. There's a Jeff, there's a Jeff Buckley song. I can't remember it's the name of it, though. Okay. And it's just the most beautiful song. And I think I would take that. I've just uh, goosebumps have just, just passed across my body because I'm feeling I'm in Kirsty's shoes, which would, which would, it's a very <laughs> odd, odd experience. <laughs> One book they always ask you for as well, don't they? And I think oh, that has 100 to. 100 Years of Solitude. Oh, really? Okay. I'm mean, trying to reread yeah, that. Yeah. I, I, again, how, how could you ask for one book, but I've chosen yeah. 100 You'd Years of You'd have to solitude. reread it a lot of times, <laughs> wouldn't you? And then they always have a luxury item. Now they, on the, pro, <laughs> the program laws, <laughs> they? well, the program laws are that they can't, it can't be overtly practical i think a duvet would be overly practical would it oh my god no but on a desert island without a duvet a really <laughs> thick oh so i can get really cozy i love i was it. i was wondering whether you'd choose a camera but of course then you'd need your printing yeah. gear and everything but, you? I, but the camera i can't then download the images no. i can't then process them <laughs> so i would love to have my camera but then i don't have all the other stuff i can only take one thing so maybe it would be I a duvet survive yeah and I'm, see i'm a survivor you see yeah. so i thought about survival <laughs> so i i took my duvet because without a good night's sleep i can't function <laughs> that's all a bit hitchhiker's guide of the galaxy isn't it the one thing yeah. you'd take is a towel or something like that <laughs> towel no no you can <laughs> you can go for a swim in the sea and then dry in the sun <laughs> that's true. a duvet just you know what you just feel so cozy i, lo- I love my coziness and um, I love my sleep, so I need a good night's sleep. Well, I, I hope that Kirsty and the BBC team will forgive me for asking you some questions that, uh, uh, that of course, they ask their guests. But <laughs> I, I was fascinated to end that way. Amelia, I, I, it's been an absolute privilege talking to you. And, and privilege is the word that is so often associiated with photography. And, uh, and it's yeah, my privilege it to... Priv- it is a privilege, and it has been a time. privilege. And every year I sort of have to pinch myself, you know... Um, that I've I've done this for this long is it's been extraordinary. Well, keep pinching, please. I will. Okay, <laughs> will do. My thanks to Amelia Trowbridge, and that's it for another day. Uh, keep sending in your emails on what you hear about photography, what it means to you, any interesting assignments that you've shot, anything at all really that can help inspire others to studio at photographydaily.show. Make sure you visit the website for links and news of upcoming specials. Music in the show was from artlist.io and I look forward to photographing with you, hearing from you and talking with you tomorrow. Photography Daily is a Loading Zone production.